Dear Dr. McKelvey, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, why don't you just introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are and what do you do? Great, yeah, thanks. So it's good to be here today. Um, uh, as you said, I'm Bob McKelvey. I'm presently one of the heart failure cardiologists at, uh, in London. Uh, our program in London is a citywide program. I'm situated at St. Joseph's Healthcare but the program involves the uh, London uh, Health Sciences uh, as well. And I've been involved in heart failure care for a good 25 plus years. I've been involved in the guidelines and chaired the guidelines. And presently I chair the Canadian Cardiovascular Society Quality Indicator Initiative. Great. So um, tell us a little bit more about this Canadian Cardiovascular Society Quality Indicator Initiative for heart failure. Um, I'd love to get your intake on this and what does this mean for our patients with heart failure? Right. So I'm very glad we have the opportunity to talk about this today. The Canadian Cardiovascular Society Quality Indicator Initiative started probably five or six uh, or more years ago. And we realized, the Canadian Cardiovascular Society realized that we didn't have indicators uh, that were national indicators. And we thought that it was very important to develop the indicators to better manage or, or better assess how we're managing patients with heart failure. And uh, so I was asked to chair the committee, which I did, and we uh, recruited uh, cardiologists and uh, various other people from across Canada, geriatricians and so on, to develop the quality indicators. And we looked at it as heart failure doesn't just take place in the hospital, it's something that takes place more in the community than in the hospital. And I think a number of the indicators or the challenges with indicators over the years have been, they capture what goes on in the hospital phase of the patient's life, but not the outpatient phase. So we tried very hard to look at each phase of the life of a heart failure patient, inpatient, outpatient, and the transitional care phase. And we developed ultimately uh, about 45 different indicators that looked at things in the hospital, such as whether they had chest x-rays, ECGs, blood work that was done, the starting of evidence-based medical therapy, indicators capturing how the transitional care would take place, and indicators that capture things such as palliative care and cardiac rehab. Uh, those, uh, all those we felt were very important. And uh, then the indicators were sent out across Canada to uh, cardiovascular specialists, heart failure and non-heart failure, and they critiqued them and they rated them. And based on that, we had a uh, developed a hierarchical system with regards to uh, the importance of the indicators. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what really, five years ago when this was starting, what was the was there an event or something that really crystallized the need for this at that point in time? Um, and, and has that need persisted until today? Right. And, and the need, of course, is the hospitalization readmission rate for, for heart failure patients. And the fact that if we don't measure or we can't measure outcomes and all the parts that go into making up those outcomes, we don't know how to change what we're doing. Uh, one of the indicators looks at whether patients are seen within a given period of time following discharge. If we could measure that uh, readily across Canada, we'd get an idea that, that maybe we're not seeing them soon enough, which is my, um, my suspicion. Mm. Then we could make changes in that regards. Uh, if we could get an understanding of in the outpatient setting, how many patients are truly optimized, um, then we, we'd know better. And can you go into a bit more detail as to what kinds of variables uh, you are collecting with this quality initiatives? And you mentioned there was a lot of challenges across Canada to unify the collection of some of these variables. Why is this uh, so challenging in, um, in, in the present age to do this type of uh, pan-Canadian initiative? 
Sure. So, so right off the bat, one of the major challenges in the outpatient setting is just capturing uh, cardiac function to get a reliable um, uh, assessment uh, once the patient leaves hospital. Uh, getting a, a reliable understanding of uh, the type of optimization of uh, medical therapy that's uh, taking place. And if we don't capture what goes on in the outpatient setting as well, we are, are doomed to not move forward because the, the hospital stay is such a small part of the, the heart failure patient's uh, life. So we, we need to dig down and get the quality indicators that reflect how we handle these patients in the community. And that's, that's what we're trying to do with the CCS Quality Indicator Committee and um, to expand the, the, the uptake of the, the indicators. And so um, where are you in the development cycle? Um, are, is this, are, are these indicators completely finished? You're, you're done and you're ready to go. Is there still some work that needs to be done to refine them? Uh, right, so the indicators themselves are, are done. They, if people go to the CCS website, they can see the indicators that um, I'm talking about. Uh, they're all there. With regards to where we, we're going, we're, we're in the process of uh, uh, trying to evaluate heart failure care across Canada right now. Uh, and hopefully later in the year, CCS will be able to present some data uh, looking at that. And so let's say, you know, you do have broad adoption of this, uh, of the CCS quality indicators. What would you hope to be the, the outcome? You know, you've initiated it. What do you hope to be the result of, of actually collecting some of this data? Sure. So if we could, once we get collecting the data, um, we can see where the gaps in care exist. In other words, if we just look at the transitional period of time, for example, and the 30-day readmission rate, if we find X percent are not seen within a given period of time or the majority of patients are seen by family physicians, maybe we can start to turn things around mm. and look at collaborative care. That is the family physician working with the specialist to help optimize these patients. If we don't use the quality indicators, if we aren't evaluating how we practice, we will never be able to change the way we practice. Um, as we sort of approach the tail end of our, our interview here, uh, a couple of questions. So if, let's say, individuals or clinics want to implement this, or even if um, hospitalists or other physicians want to bring this into their own um, healthcare system, where can they go uh, and who can they reach out to for more information? Sure. So uh, they can go to the CCS website. The, the quality indicators are, are listed there. And so um, as you wrap up this interview, you know, where we're all in social confinement, uh, what are some things that you're doing to, to keep yourself busy and to take your mind off things? <laughs> well, I'm, uh, we're seeing a lot of patients virtually, I'll tell you that. And uh, I try to go for long walks just to uh, decompress a bit. And I've got... Um, I've got, uh, I don't think I've ever shown it to you, a picture, but I've got a 1975 MGB. So I put the top down and go for a drive and I'm looking forward to some really warm weather so I can just get away from it all. Wonderful. Yeah. Dr. McKelvey, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Great.